<clears throat> okay. Hello, everyone. My name's uh, Ikeba Manabu. Welcome to What the Fox Season 2 with uh, Evolve Ant. Uh, Evolve Ant, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Evolve Ant. I'm a longtime player of VR Chat and content creator. I made a bunch of worlds that people know me for, like the Evolve Ant Arcade. Hmm. Yeah. And actually, when you made the Evolve Ant Arcade, how much hours did you uh, spend in in making it? Before we get to the questions here. So it's it's been uh, being worked on over the course of years now. So it's just something that ongoing. Every few months, I release an update for it. So I don't have a count on how many hours, but I would say that the very first version only took like two weeks maybe less than two weeks to create because it was just a very bare bones uh, jungle gym before it had even any arcade machines. Hmm. That's understandable because I've been there and I love hanging out there with friends and doing the zombie tag thing you have in there. It's always kind of fun messing around with everyone. But anyways, uh, let's get to the first question. When did you join VR chat? Basically with this first one. So I joined VR Chat around 2015. I might have played it earlier than that. I don't remember. But when I was like coming in there at least once a week was around 2015. Uh, because I was an early Kickstarter backer for the Oculus Rift development kit one. And all of us that had an early headset were starved for content. So when we found out uh, about VR chat, we all naturally went in there to try it out. And it, we got hooked immediately from day one. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's also kind of interesting hearing about the history with like certain users that played in uh, 2015 or 2014 of VR chat. Like it kind of like shows like how old this game is when it started out, when uh, thinking about it. Because like, yeah, like the first like a uh, VR chat hub world, like the cafe uh, one before the other current hub worlds we have, including uh, 2017 and whatever else after that. If you know which ones I'm talking about. Yes, although the cafe world was not technically a hub world, uh, it was just back then you didn't load VR chat and immediately appear in a world. There was a Windows application, and it had a drop-down where you would select, well, what world do you want to start in? And when you selected the world, that's the world you would spawn in. So it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't like you go into VR chat and you're just immediately in a world. That was just one of like three worlds you can pick. There was the cafe. Another one was like a museum that just had some pictures in a hallway on the walls and i forget what the third one was but there was like a a meeting room so and in fact you didn't even have an interface where you could like go world hopping because back then worlds were stored on uh people's google drive it was stored on dropbox so what you would do is you would actually uh get a link to that world uh and put that in the console in order to spawn into that world wow my my mind is blown from that when you just said that that actually surprised me what the heck okay then yep. In interesting little vr chat history as i will say as usual um i don't know if there's anything on that one i could ask because that filled out from the first question. Uh, should we just skip two or are you okay doing a uh, question two? So the things, yeah, go ahead. Ask, ask question oh, no, two. Um, IRL brother was coming in the room, so I had to zip him. <laughs> but uh, I guess it was question two. Sorry if I cut you off. But um, question two, yeah. what things did you do in VRChat in 2014? 
Uh, so it's 2015. So in 2015 VR chat, what I did was I uh, you gotta understand the the, the because a lot of people won't understand this in 2015. There wasn't really anyone online most of the time. The, the service would be empty. There'd be not a single person logged in. So VRChat in 2015 had a, a system tray application that would pop up a toast notification whenever someone logged into VRChat. So then whoever played VRChat, they would see that pop up and say, oh, this person just logged in. Let me go ahead and log in and talk to them. So, uh, at the time, the most common, uh, the player that was online the most was actually the CEO. He was the one that I would see online the most often, just hanging out, uh, which is Graham Grayler. Um, and after him was another friend of mine, uh, his in-game, he was called Kirito. And... The only reason he would come online is because he would be releasing worlds and testing them. Because otherwise, there was really no reason to log into VR chat because there was literally nobody playing. So the idea of being able to create a custom world, though, led to the people who did that logging in to test their world. And as soon as they would do that, everyone would get the toast notification and we'd be like, oh, someone's online. Then we'd log in, and they'd be like three, maybe four people in, in VR chat, uh, and we're like, oh, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm just testing this world. Here's a new feature. Um, it was very primitive back then. You know, the people who made worlds were, were very few, like maybe three or so people. Um, and, you know, they were all just learning. So a lot of the worlds were just made using primitive blocks in Unity with some textures thrown on top. Uh, nothing too fancy like we have today. And, but yeah, so that toast notification would come up. We'd go into VR chat, we'd hang out, we'd talk. And most of the time, the conversation we'd have was about, uh, you know, what's it going to be like when VR becomes a consumer product? You know, we were always, that was always the conversation. What's the, the consumer of your headset going to be like? Is What resolution will it be? What kind of hand tracking will it have? Those, those were the most, there was that conversation. And the second conversation was always about Sword Art Online, the anime. Because that was everything that we assumed was going to be where this was going. Uh, it was a very popular anime during that time frame. And so literally everyone was always having debates on whether or not VR would get to that point, and how soon if it did. Um, we were very, we had a lot of uh, grand aspirations as far as like what VR could do, and it was very common. This is interesting. It was actually very common for people to believe that VR headset was going to be like the movie The Matrix, where when you put on the headset, you're going to load up software. And you're just going to learn, and, and suddenly, ooh, you can play the piano. Ooh, you can speak another language. There was this idea back then, you know, because VR was this brand new technology. We don't have many experience with it. So everyone thought that it was going to enable you to do education in such a way that you were just going to learn all kinds of things immediately super fast. That didn't exactly happen, but that's just an interesting, like, the thought process back then in 2014, 2015. Um, so, so then eventually I started learning how to make my own worlds. I started learning Unity, uh, and I made my first avatar, which was Goofy from Kingdom Hearts. And then I started making worlds. And of course, since everyone was talking about Soda Online, the first world I made was a sort of online world, um, which became very popular because I mean it's going to be because that's the that's the anime everyone's talking about. Yeah. Um, so for during that time, it was a lot of that, a lot of just hanging out, talking about like, oh my god, what happens when this gets available to everyone, and then just talking about the latest thing we figured out in Unity, how to build an avatar, how to build a world. Oh yeah, that's right, and a lot of people do a lot of things and. 
how did people like learn uh doing uh gestures on uh models like doing like happy face and whatever else like how i'm doing right right now when i'm doing thumbs up on my character uh okay so that story is actually really long it literally will take me an hour to explain it but it's actually super, super uh, interesting of a story. Uh, and in fact, one that I have a direct role in because I'm actually the one that uh, caused that to be a major feature in VR chat. Um, the, the hand gestures, being able to change your face, um, being able to play a sound effect, all that stuff was never supposed to be part of VR chat. And in some kind, of, in some way, I kind of forced VR Chat's hand in that, and, and got it to become a feature. Um, and so there's a whole story involving that, involving how I got that to happen. Um, so if you want to hear that story, I'll try to make, I'll try to shorten it if I can. I can go over that story. Otherwise, you know, let me know. It's either or. We might save it like later on. Like it's fine to mention it a little bit, but like. Probably the short version in a moment, if that's fine so, okay. with you. I'll give oh, you I'll ahead. give you the shortest possible uh so basically um during uh in the year twenty seventeen uh people started using cute anime avatars. Prior to that they didn't. Um and because everyone was using cute avatars, people finally got brave enough to be close to people and to give head pats and hugs and stuff. Which they never did before because everyone before had meme avatars and, and stuff. So I, I noticed that I wasn't getting that kind of attention. And I realized that it was because my avatar wasn't cute. It, my avatars were all like memes. I had like a cactus, a stop sign, all kind of nonsense avatars. So I decided to make a cute avatar. And I wanted it to be even cuter. So I thought that if I could change my facial expressions on the fly that that would be extra cute so then i realized that mmd avatars have a lot of shape keys that can change your facial expressions so i was like well it's already on the avatar why isn't there a feature where we can just activate them at, at will um and so i had a discussion with the vr chat devs about possibly making it that when you do a gesture um that it would also be able to control your facial expression they disagreed with the idea and they gave me a bunch of reasons why it's not a good idea or if it was it would take too much work and yada yada um but i found a loophole because they released a uh an sdk to the beta testers that and they wanted us to test that enabled you to replace your your, your finger gestures for people who were uh who were uh, mute and they want to use sign language to talk but the default gestures that come with the Oculus were not good for sign language. So they added a feature where you could customize your fingers at least. So I used that system and I extended it and found a way to get that to work to actually control your facial expressions and play sounds and do everything else. Uh, and when I showed that to the devs, they thought it was cool, but they told me like, oh no, you shouldn't have done that because we might release a patch. And so eventually, uh, I released the um, a tutorial on how to do it, and then everybody was doing it. And then even some of the developers, they tried it out, and they were having so much fun with it too that eventually they were like, it's a feature now. <laughs> and so then they, they kept it. They, they let it stay because they realized how fun it was. And so, and then they labeled it and they called it VRC expressions or whatever. Um, and then obviously later on, it became Avatar 3.0, where you have like the complete customized everything. Um, so that's how that came about. It was because I was, it basically happened because I was jealous I wasn't getting head pets. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but that's also a cool story. And honestly, it'd be cool, like the like if on your own like YouTube channel, you would, like post like a story on how it, you made it possible for VR chat to have gestures. Just a little idea for you. It'd be interesting if that works out for you. Hmm. Yeah. But I do love the story. That it's kind of cool knowing how gestures came to be like for everyone. So thank you for that. I honestly pre appreciate it.
I really love it. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, I think we can skip three because three was as how many users were in 2014, which would mean 2015 users of VR chat. So I think we already answered question three. Yep. Uh, question four did. Well, I should put did, but do v, did VR chat in 2014 do events and parties? So. What we used to do back then, and typically on Sundays, we would have a community meetup. Um, and one one uh community member, his name was VR Pill. Uh, he would be the one to host that. Um, he he ran a a, a VR uh three uh three sixty degree VR website. And in his free time, he would host this event in VR chat on Sundays, where we all just came together. We would talk about what are we working on in VR, what world are we doing, what avatar, maybe a little show and tell, and what we thought about the future. It was a little community meetup. It was the first ones in VR chat. Um, and then on a rare instance, we would also do karaoke. Um, we would do a karaoke party together. We had a world for that. And then the third one was a talk show called Gunter's Universe. Um, so that was a friend of ours. His name was Gunter, and he would he had his own little custom uh, stage he created. And, oh wait, I heard about um, this. Sorry, yeah. didn't mean to cut you off. But I'm like, wait a minute. I remember someone telling me the story before. I'm like, wait, hold on. That sounds earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Gunther's universe. It was like a circle stage, uh, and in the center he had his his podium. He would have some guests come on, and he would just talk them and interview them um, with an audience sitting around in a circle, and it was like floating out in space. Um, and he had a mascot called uh, Mr. Whiskers, um, which was a cat that would sit on his uh, on his table. Um, and uh, so that was an event that would happen. We had all kinds of interesting people that would come on that show. Um, and uh, yeah, those were the, the, the major events. There were other things outside of that. Um, in 2016, uh, we all went to uh, Silicon Valley in real life because there was a virtual reality conference in 2016 there. Um, and so all the players of VRChat, of which there wasn't many, they, at that point it was like maybe 15 or so. We all came together to that event because VRChat was, uh, had a booth there where they were showing off VRChat. So we said, oh, let's all kind of meet up there. So we all met there, we met the team, we've hung out with them. So that was cool. So those are the major things um, back then that went hmm. on. Also, it sounded like everyone had a honestly good time, to be honest. And honestly, um, with uh, VR Pill, I've well, I think I met him, friend him, and hanged out with him a little bit. Then he like disappeared around in uh, I would say twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. But I was told he's just been doing right. uh business stuff for VR Chat in the background and traveling, going. What uh, to Japan and where else? Right. So I'm just like, yeah. He's... So oh, go ahead. Well, he so he he was hanging out with us as a community member, but eventually he got hired by VR Chat. Um, and if 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 I'm if I'm correct, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that originally he was like the 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 lead moderator. So like. Back then, the people who would moderate VR chat would actually play the game actively, and they would do moderation and show up and handle situations. And from my understanding, VR Pill was kind of like the manager of all the other moderators. And then eventually, it turned into where he did like, like you said, more like business dealings for VR chat. Um, so he just got very busy, uh, as as what happens when you you know get a career. Yeah. Which also, I'm, I was saying, I'm happy that at least he's doing okay. Because I thought he, you know, left and quit. But when I got told from one of the, the well, VR chat people team on, which is Tizzy, and Tizzy told me that not too long ago. And I'm like, oh, 
Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know he was still around. Because uh, I was told... Uh, you remember the Rock and Bull world, right? Where everyone went to like hang out and bowl? Uh, there was like that bowling yes. alley, and I thought it was like deleted or prioritized. And when I typed the name, I was like, wait, I found the link to it. And I joined it, and it's like there still, but everything's like kind of broken. Like the DJ, I want to say DJ, the skill ball and whatever else, but like everything just works. It's just really, uh, what would be the correct word to use for that world? It's like old and is like rusty. And I wish some people like would bring like back some old VR chat maps because that map, Rock and Ball, was made by VR Pill allegedly. So I'm like, oh, I did not know that. Because if VR Pill did make that world, it's sad to kind of see it, you know, not public anymore because people like going there. Go ahead. Yeah, VR Pill actually made a lot of worlds back then. Uh, and even prior to that, he made a t even more worlds. Uh, he he was one of the the people back when I was saying earlier that only a few people made worlds. He was one of them. Uh, he made he would make tons of worlds. Um, and uh, he would even get help. You know, he would hire people to help make certain assets he needed. Uh, and interestingly enough, he even he even used to be Santa. You know, in VR chat, there was a, sometimes some years there would be Christmas, and there would be an event, and he would come in in a Santa costume, and people would take turns, sit on his lap, and ask for what they want for Christmas. He used to do that. Okay, that sounds adorable. That actually kind of sounds adorable that he actually did that. Yeah. <laughs> And now I guess there is pictures of that. People did take pictures of that when he did the Santa thing, which honestly, oh he, yes, oh they did. So that explains like when people uh, explore around in VR chat and they're using that kind of avatar. Huh, interesting. The dots are connecting. Hold on, I, I can still hear mm -hmm. you. I'm letting the dogs out of the kennel real quick. Come on, buds. They were whining, so I had to let them out. There we go. Uh, I think we can do question five, and then we can just skip one of the questions that are related to five. If you're okay with that. Okay. Uh, did VRChat have a Kickstarter? Basically, to shorten the question on that one. Uh, so VRChat did not have a Kickstarter. What they did, um, it was started from my understanding is that there was one guy who originally worked on VR chat as like a little project. He made like the little bare bones that you could log in and talk to someone in VR and then that was it. And then uh, Graham Gaylor and Jesse, uh, I forget his last name, like Jordy, I think, uh, they came together and they, I think they purchased that from that guy because he had pretty much like abandoned it. And then they decided they seen more potential, and they said this could be something big, and so they started a, the the team for VR Chat, um, and they started getting investments. So it wasn't a Kickstarter; it was actually uh, venture capitals that capital that was uh, investors that that helped fund VR Chat. Um, in fact, there was one year where they got like fourteen million dollar investment. Uh, and then another year they got like, I think it was like 98 or something million dollar investment, uh, until now where people obviously can get VRC plus, um, to help fund VR chat. So there was never a Kickstarter campaign. It was just all venture capital, uh, investment. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So it went from that to that and okay. I just thought about it, and I'm like, I just find that interesting, huh? Because some people I hang out with have said uh, VR chat was like a college game idea, so I'm just like, when hearing this, I'm like, that for some reason kind of conflicts with that. I'm like, wait, hold on, what? Like it? Well, like I said, it's fuzzy. I never really asked. Uh, I never really asked the CEO, like, hey, what is, like, the real begin? I've never asked that question. We weren't interested in that back then because, you know, starting back then, you just see this app, and it's, like, and it was very bare bones, you know? 
people's eyes back, back then, your eyes did not track. Your, your eyes just looked wherever you were facing. Okay? And your mouth did not uh, have vizemes and all that stuff. It just, your mouth was just open and closed when you talked. That was it. Jeez. So it was very bare bones. So we weren't thinking about like, oh, what's the, what's the history? What started you in coming up with this? Because it was so basic that nobody cared. Now that VR chat has turned into this big thing, now those questions have meaning. Cause it's like, oh shoot, like what are the roots? But we didn't know like it was gonna be like that back then, so we didn't ask. Yeah, which honestly, if the person who actually had the original idea ever like comes to fruition or you know comes out and wants to talk about it, they can. Unless they sign a contract with an NDA on it. It depends on it with either or how they depict it. That's how I would say it. Whoever like is the original owner of VR chat and whatever else they did. So that's how I would see it. This is again, I could be wrong about that. It it could have been, you know, uh the CEO who who created first. It's just I have a slight memory from way back where I overheard that it was someone else first and then he just abandoned it. But that was like almost 10 years ago, you know, Jeez. so. Yeah. Uh, even though we got off track from like the main questions, but like I'll see talking about what we just talked about right there was fine, like interesting when you think about it. Um, let's skip the question. Well, actually, we're going to skip question seven, right after we're done with six. Uh, question six, what things did you do in VR chat, basically? I just realized how I was trying to spill that one. So, so, uh, in, in, so, not only did I make worlds in, in avatars, one of the main things that I enjoy in VR chat is actually, like, being silly and making people laugh with different gags and things. Um, so when I figured out how to do the gestures to change a facial expression, I started making avatars that do all sorts of little jokes and gags and impressive things like animations where I can make like a demon come out of a portal in the sky and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I used to uh, go around and do that to people until eventually there was one YouTuber uh, from this YouTube channel called Conglomerate. And uh, the, 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 the person who ran it was Rizola. And so he was in the, the old hub world in 2017. And he met me in that world. And I started doing all my normal shenanigans to him. <laughs> but... I didn't know that he was recording it. And so he turned that into a YouTube video and that became like a huge hit on YouTube. And uh, it, it, that video became one of about four or five, like I would say pivotal videos that helped jumpstart everyone suddenly flooding into VR chat. Um, there was just, it was like five or so videos that just became an instant hit. And everyone was like, oh my God, what is this game? I want to try it. Um, so there was like five hit videos back then before the Uganda Knuckles obviously became a huge meme. And then that brought in even more people. Yeah. Eesh. <sighs> well, that. And actually, before we jump to the other question. Do you remember the video name, like the video you were talking about? Uh, it's in my favorites. I don't remember the name, but I could find it. Like I could message you on, on Discord if you want to see it. Oh, I want um, mine. I will put it in the description of the video on YouTube and whatever. Sorry if I cut you sure, off. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send you the link to that. Yeah. Um, I think that should be it with that question. Yep, seven, we're going to eight. Oh, oh, you need... Oh, I thought you were going to ask something. I was making sure I didn't cut you off. Uh, I mean, there were other things I've done as well. Oh. I mean, I was also uh, a volunteer for the moderation team at one point. 
um, I used to go around and test worlds. And this was before the, the, you know, the community labs where you could just submit to the lab and then eventually became public. Uh, it, prior to that, worlds had to be tested, made sure they didn't break the TOS, yada, yada. And if everything was good, then it would get approved and it would become public. So I was part of a team of some community members and we would go and explore the world people would submit to be published to VRChat. And we would explore it, make sure it doesn't break any rules, make sure that it reaches a good frame rate, yada, yada. And if everything was okay, we would give a thumbs up to VR Pill, and VR Pill would then publish it and it would be available for everyone in the VR chat platform to join. Um, so I was a part of that until, uh, until that got replaced with the community labs, and then I left. Um, and, uh, a bunch of other things. There's other things that I'm a part of that I can't talk about. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, you mean like NDA stuff, which is understandable. But you said yeah. right there, like you guys would go to pill, give them the thumbs up, or like a world after you guys tested it. When you said that, that yes, <laughs> that actually gave me a flashback. Cause like, um, when I started like making worlds myself, and I made my First world, which was I never have I ever using the train stuff with Unity 5.6 or whatever it was. Yeah, it was 5.6. And yeah. when I posted it and whatever, I saw if it was published and VR pill. I saw someone was in there and I'm like, who's in there? And I joined it and I'm like, wait, VR pill? And I was like, uh, 16 at the time and this was my first world publish. So. Did I fangirl a little, little when see him? Yeah, and then he did give me advice to like not use this kind of water shader, shader that was in the world. World, and I'm like, That's okay. The, the most common bug that people would have when we were testing worlds, yeah, is they wouldn't use a water uh, shader that would work in VR. Yeah, but when he told me about that, I updated it like a few times, and my world did get used by like content creators, which I didn't mind. But like I had like such bad grammar uh problems when doing using the text thing in VR chat. I'm like fudge, I messed up my grammar again. <laughs> but I got better at it, but like honestly that's honestly going back to what I said not too long ago, because that's the first time I ever met VR Pill and talked to him. And honestly, he was a sweet person. Yeah, a lot of people a lot of people met him that way, believe it or not. Like what you just said is a very common story of Back then, uh, people would upload their their world, and then they see someone playing it, and they're like, "Oh shoot, someone's playing my world." They log in, and it's VR pill just confirming everything's all right in the world. And so they'd all meet him because they see because they notice one person in their world. Who's that? I didn't tell anyone about my world. Well, yeah, because he's on the team. He he's just seen you upload this world. He's gonna inspect it now. So that was a very common thing that would happen that people would meet him through that. Yeah, and this is right before uh, labs was added. So, because when I was trying right. when I was trying to figure out how to like you know make my world public, I was like research research. I'm like, oh, okay, this is how send in the thing, wait, and then boom, publish. So it was just like my brain was just kind of blown, and it kind of he him and whatever else kind of kept me motivated to make worlds still. And even besides, even though this world was made by a friend of mine so I can use it for this talk show. It just shows I kind of have enough passion to keep going on with this game and have fun with people. And honestly, kind of, I, I want to say kind of, but I really thank VR Phil for that. He inspired me to a really good point. Even at a very young age. Great. And honestly, if I could tell him that, I would. I honestly would. To tell him thank you. But anyways, let's not go too off track. I almost got emotional when saying that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me make sure I'm keeping track. Uh, you know, I guess I can say what number nine is. Uh, what did the first hub uh, world of VR chat look like? So the first hub world was in 2017 and it still exists today um that you can actually explore it 
but um it was a like a castle in an otherworldly place um it was open uh and it basically had like a a staircase going down there was a tree you walk past the tree the staircase going down and then you see like a a big area with a fire uh, a campfire in the middle and then behind that there were like an area for different portals with common worlds but then when you made a right turn there was a hallway you could find that would take you to the room where the mirror is uh and that was like the most popular place in 2017 that was like the place to be in front of the mirror in the old hub world or across that bend um and even in the video that, I'll, that i'm going to be giving you the link to you're basically it's all in that world everything that happens is in that world and you can see the mirror room and everything so wow that was the first hub world yeah and actually we since i know which one you're talking about and it's not too off track of topic the group above my head is using like the background of that thing as the group banner if you look at the group i'm representing that um oh i see yeah and i when i figured out what the name of the thing in the middle was it was called called white tower hall i'm like wait a minute i can use that for this and i took inspiration so that is actually the the hub world that came after the one i'm talking about oh really in your picture oh, okay yeah, it looks like it looks like that's the one that came after. It's like, yeah. Okay, how to make Which sure? Which makes sense because there was a, there was a tower in the world that came after. There was a central tower with portals in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the second one, not the first one. Oh, so the one that's above my head is uh, okay, huh? But like, when you mention that, I'm like, wait, that sounds like what's above my head right now, but like different kind of version of it. Huh. Yeah, that's the one above your head is the one most people recognize. Um, because it was like when the explosion of users happened in twenty eighteen, that was like the main for the longest time. So most people from that era recognize that one more than the, the one prior to it. Hmm. Maybe because late oh, sorry. prior to that one, the the, the, the original hub world that was when VR Chat had only about like eighty players that played the game total. You know, from 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 September and before, from January to September of twenty seventeen, you only had like about eighty players. Okay, wow. so they recognized that hub world, but it wasn't until uh, October of 2017 that people started flooding into the game right mm. so that initial flood yeah they did see the original one but it wasn't long after that when they changed it to to the one that you have in your picture um so then that became the one that people spent the most time in uh so yeah yeah honestly if there was a way to find the first original one before the one in my group photo picture I guess I wouldn't mind like going back and trying to find it and see it because I wouldn't mind seeing some like old VR chat history myself and documenting it for like later because that's a piece of history yeah, that shouldn't be lost. Oh, go ahead. There's a there's an actual memorial world that's built off of that one. So you have that world, which is the original, and then there's a secret wall that you can walk through that leads you to a memorial. And it has a huge plaques covering all the walls with all the names of all the players that played the game from 2017 until 2018. Wow. And honestly, when hearing this, because I had like this weird idea I had right before we I got on when we were doing this, and I wanted to like make like a good combination of all like the original hub worlds together into one. So everyone would have like nostalgia trip down memory lane. But the problem is I need like reference photos and all that stuff if I ever want to like make that a reality. Because like say if you wanted to see like one of the hub worlds you went to when you were playing, you'd be like, let's go here. It's just like something I was going to spat out because I'm like, you know what? When it hurt to mention it, 
to get people hyped for it later on, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna need to get water later on. But that's normal, we'll do stuff like this. Um, I don't know what else we can say on n number nine. Uh, okay, uh, number 10, what were your thoughts on VR chat? Uh, from 2014 to 2024 of VR chat on how much it has changed from when it was made to present day right now. In the early days, 2015, everyone's avatars were mostly video game characters and Marvel characters and DC. So you had Batman, you had Superman, you had Spider-Man, you had uh, Halo Master Chief, right? These were the avatars everyone was. Big tall, muscular, uh, and everyone made their avatars to scale. So everyone's avatar was really tall back then. But back then, nobody got too close. So this distance right here is as close as people would be comfortably. Any closer than that, people would get comfortable and they'd back off. Hmm. 2017 is when, like I said before, earlier, that's when people started using anime avatars, and suddenly everybody in the game was cute. And when people were cute, instead of being buff, you know, Batman, they didn't mind when you got closer, because it was like, oh, adorable. So, so people would, would, would get close, and then they'd give head pads and all that stuff. And so then VRChat transitioned from just a social talk from a distance game to a much more intimate, be close, give cuddles type of game. Um, and back, back then, the ability of a world author to express their creativity was very limited because the SDK had, had a very small subset of the abilities that it has today. And so the result of that was that the worlds that we created back then were much more simplistic. They were more of a visual experience and not so much of an interactive experience. Uh, there were some uh, interactions SDK2 supported, like obviously pick upables, chairs, turning a light on and off, turning a mirror on and off, basic things. And some people, myself included, found ways to kind of push that to the edge and be able to do a even more than that and do interesting things like back then one one uh hot world was the uh this world made by the japanese community where you could sit in a chair grab the controls and you can make the chair fly around with a trail um, oh that one yeah you you can still see that world on in the vr chat website when you watch the intro video and you see like a chair fly around that was the actual world um and then eventually we got uh, Udon. And so Udon pretty much just unlocked the gauntlet. You know, it was like the, 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 the golden corral of, of your access to the APIs and doing anything you, you can imagine. Um, so people started building worlds, all kinds of complexity. And then eventually you got people like Jar who would make actual game worlds like Murder and uh, Among Us and stuff. Um, and, and and prior to that, though, there still was programming in VR chat, but it was exclusive to people who knew how to write shaders. So the initial transition was from basic interaction in the world to suddenly people realizing, wait a minute, we can just write custom shaders. And then people started going wild with like learning everything they can about shaders um, until eventually Udon came out and then people went wild with making actual game worlds. Um, and so naturally people took that and they started coming up with their own events, like your event right here, uh, and, and improv events and, uh, you know, what's in the box and all these other game worlds and, and events people started coming up with. Uh, and so now 
VR chat has turned into this thing where initially it was this, this weird, quirky little app that maybe if you were lucky, someone would log into. To now it's like, there's literally something for everyone. There's always some kind of event going on. There's always people logged in. Um, you, you can even go to VR chat Sunday morning and they actually have, they host church services in VR chat. It what literally the... has become like, yes, they, you can go to church in VR chat. There are services for that. Yes. Wow. Um, so, you know, it, it has become a phenomenon, especially now, you know, you go on, on social media, you know, you go on, on, on Twitch, you go on YouTube, you go on X, whatever it is, you can find tons of content that was made in VR chat, whether it be like funny moments or a talk show like yours, whatever it may be, or people live stream that it became a sensation and people love it. And then look at that VR chat kind of like helped explode the whole VTuber thing where you get like all these, uh, you know, cute anime characters that are hanging out meeting with each other and it's a stream and it's like, Oh, this is my favorite VTubers. It's, you know, like Gargara or something or Fillion, whatever it may be, you know, it's amazing, you know, how much, uh, this has caused and, and and grown, and the game is completely different, and it continues to grow. Uh, now, we even even with AI, the latest topic of the world right now, AI, right? And we already VR Chat was the first. VR Chat had AI controlled NPCs that you can hang out with and talk to, and it would respond to you before that was ever a thing on the internet, right? Before at least like you have like uh who is it like what's her name neuron or neuro i think it's neuro the v that's like ai controlled right so right but the thing is that vr chat already had that before that like that was already a thing we immediately realized oh shoot we can take this ai and put it onto an avatar in vr chat it was already done. So VR chat has done amazing and it continues to do amazing things. And it's amazing how much this game has grown. Yeah, honestly, it, it really is. Besides, because I, everyone, how would I say this? Hmm. It's like the game has done well. And then everyone can agree. Even some like veteran users like you can agree. There are positives and there, there's negatives. Even. I say the negatives because yes. of what's going on recently, but we're not going to get into that. There are negatives, but the thing is, the reality has negatives. Anywhere humans exist, there's going to be negatives. That's just, that's just life. Yep, which is honestly the truth on that. Um, I think but that, I would oh. say that VR chat has actually caused much more positive than negative because for every negative story some YouTuber might point to and say, look at this going on in VR chat. For every instance of that that could be pointed out, there's a hundred instances of VR chat changing people's lives for the better. Yeah. So I would say that VR chat is a net positive because I can tell you so many, and I have over 2,000 friends in VR chat. Okay. I can tell you so many people who have had this game save their life. Okay. This game has saved people's lives. And, 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 and so many people have gotten married through meeting in VR chat. And today, and I know this because I know them. There are there are children alive and born today that only exist because their parents met in VR chat. You, so, you have a fellow point on that, to be honest. When I think about it, I'm like, wait, fuck, you're not wrong. Sorry for my language, but go ahead. So so for every YouTube video that says, oh, VR chat, you know, it's bad, because look, there's look what's happening right here. Yeah. 
that is happening everywhere the people hang out that's that's society but the thing is is that and i'm not saying like you know obviously that's a problem you know vr tech needs to work things out but what i'm saying is that we can't ignore how much positive has been caused because you look out in the world and you got all these wars going on and you know with these different countries and things and but when you play vr chat they're like best buddies, okay? Because I have friends that are from Russia. And I have friends that are from the Ukraine, right? And they were friends in VR chat. Some of them even in relationships, in love with each other. VR chat doesn't care about, oh, your country, da 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 da. That doesn't exist in VR chat. In VR, we're all just friends. We're all just hanging out. We all we're all in this together, right? Right. So to me, there's something special there. You can't. You don't have that in the real world. So for as much as people want to point out that you know, oh, VR chat has, but there's a lot of good in VR chat. There's a lot. You can point out the flaws, but there's a lot of good, and I feel like a lot of times the good gets ignored. Because everyone just wants to complain all day. You know, VR people love this game so much. And you can tell how much people love VR chat because people love to complain about VR chat. Because they love it so much that they want it to be more. They want it to, to, to fix all these problems that they have. Everyone has problems with the game. I myself have problems that I wish, oh, I wish they would fix that. I wish they would fix that. But you, but the only reason I, I I feel so strongly about all the things I think the game should fix is because I see so much potential. I see what this game could become, and people need to to remember that before they go off on the deep end about all the bad things. You gotta remember, like the reason you feel so strongly about that. Not for everyone. There's some people who, well, let's be honest. Some people are in it just to make money, and they just use VR chat as a as clickbait in videos and things, but the people who generally play the game, but they're playing the game while complaining, it's because they care about the game and they want it to be better. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I think it's okay to mention this. Uh, when, during like recent stuff, and we're like running away, so we're not mentioning much other things, did you see the announcement about the one thing about the age verification VR chat posted, even though it was a non ping announcement? Uh, I, I just want to fill me in on that. I don't remember if I ever seen that. Uh, it was posted around yesterday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, my time. It should be there still if you're in the VR chat Discord. If you want to double check. Well, just tell me, tell me what happened. Basically, in a short form, since I guess it's going to be mentioned in the stream slash video. Um, basically, someone made a video saying the disturbing world of VR chat. And certain people that were like chat moderators in the Discord of VR chat were exposed for being, let's just say, doing stuff with lolly characters that are inappropriate. That's how I would say it. And, um, okay. After that, and whatever else, because they were exposed while someone like, uh, what was her name? Fia? Fia? Whatever her name is. Like, she, she is a part of the virtual reality show, which she runs. Yes. yes. Yeah. Basically, while she was doing her podcast thing with the uh, Thrill Seeker, uh, people that hated uh, the person literally put up a thing on the video screen, literally of non safe for work thing exposing the person. And then, basically, okay. from this video in a short sense, they literally removed him and the other person that were involved as chat moderators from the Discord, from their duties, and they said in their announcements in short form they're going to add a age verification to keep uh, minors and adults safe is how I would say it. To put in a short word, word sense without going too deep into it because okay. the video about it is like a one hour video so you would have to find that on your own time. Because it's been like going on the round of X well it's, since it's not a bad word how I would say it. it's like a X shit storm. That's why a lot of people in the VR chat Discord are going like, eh, talking about it so much. 
So this is just for reference. I mean, I, I I agree. I think that I think VRChat should have when you make an account, it should it should confirm from like your age. That way, if in the future they ever need to add features to like. But I think it kind of does in a way though, because I remember that there was, I remember that VRChat had a thing where if you as a content creator uploaded a world or an avatar and you marked it as like having not safe for work elements to it, it would not show up. Like if it was an avatar, it would yeah. not be visible by people who were minors. Um, um, and so I don't know how it determined if you were, I think it was based on your, Oh, because that was for oh. if you were on like the Oculus Quest. Yeah. Because the Oculus Quest, when you make an account, you put in your age. So it's through there that they were able to determine. But obviously, that's not going to work if you're playing on PC. You know, if you made your account and you're not using Oculus, using like, you know, the Valve Index or, or the Beyond or something, you know. So then VRChat having its own age verification, that, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And also, uh, you can't, oh. at that point, you can't get it from Quest. Yeah, and everyone knows like there's like certain VR chat spin-off games like Rose Night, Chill Out, and whatever else. Right? And honestly, yes. I want to note something from Chill Out what they did. They added a thing that's called Not Safe for Work DLC, which like if you want it, you can basically put in your age. And let's say if a minor tried to, you know, get it and put it in when they were born, it would just go, No, you're not allowed to look at it. Basically, VR right. chat. If VR chat went and did what Chillout did, sure, like people would try to lie about their age. But I recently put something on the canny saying what people use a state ID to like verify what age they were, because one, it would make it where the kid would have to wait until they're eighteen when they get their state ID and whatever else, and then they can play VR chat. That's how I would do it. So uh, actually, what you're describing is already done in South Korea. Oh. South Korea has a, a number that's given to everyone, and game developers can use that to confirm if you're old enough uh, because they have certain laws like how long you can play a game and depending on what time of day it is and stuff. So there's an ID that they give out uh, that you use, and they can verify your age based on that number. So it's not like you're just like your driver's license, but it's a specific ID that's given to everyone. They have that in South Korea. So, uh, you know, that's a debate whether or not something like that should come to the States. I don't know, but it is a thing that's already done in South Korea. So I think that, you know, that could be something that's looked at and maybe discussed and modeled or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, because yeah, it is a problem. And I think that, a lot of, for example, I know this is not VR chat related, but like YouTube comments, you know, I feel like a lot of people mock uh, comments they see on the internet. And I always felt like if every comment posted on the internet next to the comment displayed the age of the person who wrote the comment, I feel like people would realize that 90% of the nonsense comments are just made by kids because some people will make a whole YouTube video 30 minute long video debating a comment on the internet and that comment for all you know could have been made by a 13 year old like what do they know and you're making a whole 30 minute video to refute this what this was written here yeah but who cares that was written by a kid so yeah I think that there is positives to having something where it does like, you know, confirm your age, but then there's, you know, there's privacy. I don't know. Yeah. It's, there... it's a whole conversation. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's everything though. But, um, for everyone watching, uh, what the Fox season two, episode six with evolve Ant, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And honestly, this was almost about to be one hour. So I'm like, we should probably wrap up because we were almost getting close to one hour mark. But uh, besides that, uh, you guys take care. This episode will be on YouTube and Spotify. I'll put the links down below when I post it. And if you guys like What the Fox series, let me know. And besides that, take care. Love you all. And Natcha, do you want to say something before we end? 
Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. It was it was fun, nice conversation, and and good to, to for me to reminisce on the past. Yeah. Take care, guys, and see you next time.